coming days well i think business you are doing exceedingly well that's a different matter no 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 yeah. i think business in any part of the world is not easy and i think it has its challenges wherever you go we work and what would be the advice to the i'm saying we work we work out of four countries and five countries now and wherever we work we always have challenges and let me tell you that that health and food are the two most regulated you know uh, enterprise enterprises all over the world so you have so many laws you have to comply with there are so many compliances uh, there are so many checks uh, it's not easy to sustain and i think india is relatively very easy compared to everything else and uh, you know uh, i i actually believe that we can uh, grow very well not just in india but also abroad provided we have the perseverance you know kadam chum leti hai manzil hi aakar kadam chum leti hai manzil hi aakar agar rahi khud apni himmat na hare very good very and good. i think that's really what uh, you know pushed all of us i'm saying everywhere where we went we lost money everywhere we start a new country it took us 3 years to 5 years to actually you know recover our losses because you know we had to make a lot of losses when we enter a new country because you understand the ethos by the time you understand the laws you know you find your way around it it takes a lot of time and effort and a lot of investment uh, to overcome that i think you just don't give up you just keep trying and i think people who don't try hard enough are people who fail all right and ultimately i think people who try hard enough always succeed and i think every failure is a step for success and i think that's uh, what i think you know it would be my advice to everybody i also started my company when i got married 150 rupees a month uh, took loans at 36% per annum uh, paid off my loans took me 10 years to do that to then become a debt free company so i think it's a process and and it's going to take time and rome is not built in a day all right and i think if you think that you're going to get suddenly rich and suddenly successful uh, that's not true i think nothing works like hard work and you have to just keep on working hard till you get there all right now jay if i could ask you about the risk taking abilities of the of the promoters of the company uh, i have seen often buying very few these companies are quite well protected and they don't want to invest money just blindly and uh, they know it's a running business it's going on very well so they would not like to put on money and uh, take the risk so are you seeing this trend or uh, if you are seeing this trend why and if you are not seeing this trend what would be your uh, opinion on this so it depends on the nature of business that that uh, you know that particular category or that industry is operating in right now if you're talking about e-commerce or the new uh, internet startup system that's you know you hear stories from around the country and uh, there's a lot of appetite for risk so funding is not as big a challenge as it used to be a couple of years ago as long as you have a distinct offering in the marketplace and a strong story to communicate but that being said uh, so the biggest challenge to success is sometimes success itself once you become once you overcome the first couple of hurdles then you know let's play safe mentality catches on and that is something that as leaders in organizations they have to constantly look out for and constantly push the envelope on breaking new ground and it's easier said than done right so there are there are always contradictory thoughts there is core competence which comes in and says is this what you're good at stick to your knitting somebody else comes and says how will you know till you push the envelope on some uncomfortable uh, uh, you know tenets of your business so you will have to mix and match that and it's definitely not easy as dr batra as you know very eloquently put it, it doing business in any part of the world is challenging in fact in one of my workshops uh, in uh, in nairobi there was this gentleman who stood up and said doing business is like sitting on the back of a tiger and it's thrown you off and you're hanging by its tail if you stop the tiger is going to eat you so it's it's it exemplifies the difficulty All of right, doing business uh, right fantastic well played now dr patsat if i could ask you uh, the second generation leader now uh, you have been in this business i know you have come from a very humble background and i know how you have come up in life and you have achieved in this stage now have you tried to analyze that who would like to be the second generation leader and are they capable of taking care of the business that you have set up it's a very good uh, question satya has raised i'll just give background of mine when i started 2008 started with 20000 rupees okay and you know the period was under downtown this was a 
recession there. So we have already seen one kind of recession, but still we survived because we had a lot of opportunities in India. At that time, our service sector was oil and gas globally. There was no projects for one and a half years completely we survived on the Indian market. Even today, given the current scenario of the oil price, there is a lower of the market all over the geographies, but still we have tremendous opportunities in terms of uh, local uh, structure projects, hydro projects, and many other projects. So India is a good destination. See, when the business always has a cycle, you know, when you don't have an innovative way of expansion, the business uh, life cycle... So my will... question is second generation leaders, yeah. That's why I'm saying the business cycles gets back to five years or 10 years. So you cannot be a one man or one person, so you have to develop the leaders. And grooming leaders is always an investment for the companies. It cannot be done overnight. It takes time, so at least some three, four years, five years time. I think probably in my organizations, I am trying to have some few leaders who Fantastic. can very take good. it up very and good. it can run without my presence in the company now. Fantastic. Uh, Vivek, if I could ask you, would you take these gifting ideas, innovations, and creativity, everything, to the global as well also? Have you ever thought about it, or would you consider restrict only into India, actually? Uh, so, uh, so, so first, uh, what we uh, feel about e-commerce, it's uh, growing very fast. But, but if you don't have control over uh, your business, then then it can spiral down to you know uh, nothing. So we are we want to scale up. We would scale up, but uh, we want to first entrench ourselves in the Indian market first. So we would expand. Uh, then, then when we are uh, we have tested this model and when we are go, uh, we are having good presence in India, definitely we would uh, move to uh, global scale as well. But India itself is such a huge market that I mean uh, I think I think for uh, next uh, two three years I would still want to uh, explore the opportunities in India rather than going abroad. All right, that's well point. Anybody in the audience would like to uh, you know, ask a few questions if you could have to them? This is an open uh, forum, you can ask. Let's open up if you could ask anyone. Can I have the mics around going over here? Yes, the gentleman is speaking up. Yes, the person in grey there, yes. Please introduce yourself and uh, I'm Anil Hebar. I'm also an entrepreneur. Uh, I also have my sympathies with the Amadmi Party. Fantastic. Uh, I have a question pointed to Dr. Mukesh Batra. I uh, agree with uh, almost all of what you have told, but when it comes to your uh, own company, sir, I would like to know what are the steps you have taken to spread homeopathy in the rural areas where I feel it's very important, especially with this type of uh, dengue uh, spread we have got recently. Because you are very well known in the cities and also, I believe, pretty pricey in the cities. I, I understand as an entrepreneur, you also have to recover your costs. But what steps have you taken to spread your concept uh, into the rural areas? Because I'm a very big fan of homeopathy, so I'm asking you this question. Yeah, thank just you. to interrupt you, yesterday Ramdev found out some Ayurvedic this thing for this, uh, for the for the combating dengue. dengue. So uh, do you have any uh, anything with, to combat this, uh, this thing? well point here? Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for your question. And thank you for your support for homeopathy. And uh, you know, my support for Aam Aadmi Party and respect is equal. So thank you <laughs> for being here as well. The answer to your question is no. We are not into rural India as yet. We don't have a model which will get us there right now. We are still thinking for the last three, four years. We are finding a way how to get there. Uh, we haven't found an answer yet. We're still working on it. So that's the uh, answer to one question. The second is that, having said that, we are already now in tier three, tier four cities. You know, we are in 110 cities in India, and I would say any city which has a population more than one lakh people, you will find a Dr. Batra's clinic there. So partly, yes, we have covered, you know, that part, but we haven't gone to below one lakh population cities yet, and we haven't gone to rural India. We're still finding a way out. Your second part of the question about uh, dengue and, uh, you know, in a way. Uh, what do we do is also that, uh, you know, we have a foundation and not just because of CSR, but for the last 15 years, uh, we've actually been running free clinics in every city where we are. So we run 100 and 110 free clinics all across wherever we are, where people get treated in the same clinics totally free of charge, everything including medicine, services, exactly like what it is for other people as well. Yeah. And for here, a lot of people, I mean, today, because we are a brand and we are well-recognized, 
I would say that 20% of people who come to us to bigger cities are from outside the smaller villages. So they do make use of it indirectly. But directly we are not in the villages yet. So that's one point. The second point that uh, you asked and Sathya as well, is that homeopathy has been actually very, very useful in uh, you know, epidemics, right from the Asian flu, and it's a very cheap and very uh, you know, useful alternative. Unfortunately, it's not being used uh, by the government the way it should be doing. Uh, we uh, gave about 9,000 doses of swine flu uh, to you know, not only our patients, but to people in different cities, and not a single one of them developed swine flu after that. So there are preventive medicines Sir, in homeopathy as well. And uh, the Andhra Pradesh government about 10 years ago uh, for viral encephalitis gave belladonna, which is homeopathic medicine, to about 10 lakh people. Not a single one of them developed uh, you know, viral yeah. encephalitis. And the cost of it was like one rupee per person. And versus this, the central government has allocated, you know, about six months ago, 4,000 crores for prevention of viral encephalitis in UP and BR. So I'm just giving you the, you know, just equation. to broaden the yeah. interaction that uh, you had with Dr. Batra, if I could ask you, uh, Dr. Mukesh Batra is someone who uh, spends major part of his uh, working hours either in office or somewhere else into the CSR activities, what I have observed. And uh, many of you probably are, would not be aware that he is a good singer as well. And uh, today he is there as a speaker and I find uh, uh, he has often invited me but I didn't have the fortune to go there. Uh, he is a very good singer. I would not request you to sing here, that's a different matter. Uh, what I'm going to ask you is that since you are very passionate uh, into this, uh, uh, you know, the social enterprises, uh, his question is very relevant. Am I to understand that what I put forth in my video and what I've been talking, is it, the, is it that uh, Indian uh, conditions that is not, uh, uh, is preventing you not to go to the villages? Is the system that way or uh, is the model you have not created? I am sure you are, because you have built a successful model. Your models are often uh, uh, translated by others I, I can't believe that if you tell me that we, are not, we have not built models for the rural areas, definitely you have built models for the rural areas. The reason you are not going there is because of the stifling bureaucracy, is the process that file is not moving, land is not there, these logistics issues are there, and various other issues that are created by the government. Please have a, uh, let us have an honest answer. Well, honest answer is it's, it's partly both, uh, because conditions in rural India are really not uh, very easy. I mean, even to go to tier three, tier four cities, I mean, honestly, our doctors run away. I mean, it's very difficult for them to stay there and to actually work with people. You know. One thing I'm and convinced that so you are not looking. You are someone who doesn't look at profit. Yeah. You are someone who penetrates into the market, and you you would like to first establish. Yes. That I know. Yeah. So this is the reason I want to want to understand. Since you have uh, you've taken a lot of steps uh, for this, so is there any possibility that next two to three years uh, his wishes could come true and you would penetrate into the rural areas? Couldn't no. this be an announcement at India Leadership Conclave itself here? Well, I would say the next five years. Not the next two, three years, that but is. the next five years. We certainly would. All right, all right. Uh, do you have any... Uh, uh, yeah. I, I just have a supplementary question. Uh, all right. To Satya and to all the other panelists. Uh, I'm a moderator, so they uh, will answer. Okay. Yeah. So they, uh, we all... Uh, make in India is a very popular slogan today. Uh, I've been one of the entrepreneurs who have been trying to make something in India. Right. But who is going to buy what is made in India? Because... Even though we have driven out the British 68 years back, we still have not lost our fascination for the white skin and what is made abroad. I, I make excellent view boxes for the radiologists, but when I take it to a hospital, uh, they say, oh, we want Chinese or Korean or Taiwanese or something. So nobody wants to uh, buy what is made in India, even though the quality is equal to anybody else or even better. So what do you say for this? Do you all have the same type of experience? Even in homeopathy, for example, when I go to a homeopathy doctor, if, if I say, can I buy this, many of them will say, no, this is an Indian one, you go for a German product. You mean to say that they will okay, not so buy the Indian homeopathy, but they will buy yes, a German homeopathy? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying, uh, again, your question in two parts. The part about Indian products not being good, I think it is true because they're not well regulated and uh, the capacity is not the way it should be. So that's one part. The second part is when you talk about going abroad, I think if you want people to really uh, admire you, uh, it depends on how much self-respect you yourself give to your own country. And I think whenever we go abroad, we have what is called a MRM, which is a management review meeting, where we have other people, we always play the Indian national anthem. Uh, we have lots of people abroad, you know, our, our, our staff over there, for example. They say that, you know, we have to wear Western clothes because, you know, people can't, you know, relate with us. Why we 
I said, no, we will deal with foreigners and we are dealing with foreigners. But we will still dress up in sarees. We will still wear our Indian, Indian clothes. And I think when you, when you carry the Indian flag abroad with great pride, I think then people tend to respect you. And I'm saying if you yourself don't uh, you know, present yourself uh, with great brand pride of your country, I think then people don't take you seriously. I think this is something which gets built over a period of time. Sir, you are yourself a Padma Sri Awadi and uh, do you receive the same kind of support from the government because you are very well known and when you visit uh, these offices, so do they encourage you a lot uh, you know, to come out to, uh, to new plants and expand, come to this one and make in India? I don't uh, have anything to do with the government. Okay. Even though I'm a Padmishi Awadi. Right, yeah. And uh, I don't interact with the government people at all. And I've, of course, treated, you know, many prime ministers and whatever, you know, yes, important yeah. people in the country. But we discuss everything else about India, but not about health. All right. And uh, I'd be very happy to share my experience with the government of India. With the government of India. And actually, you know, uh, take health forward in many ways. I try to do that. You know, I was appointed many years ago as a health advisor. But I'm sorry to say that it didn't work out very well because I would get a very outspoken person and very honest in what I did. Yes, I and I always got an invite for a meeting one day after the meeting was over. So this is the. So I, I believe that bureaucracy actually manages and manipulates uh, people, and uh, they don't allow anything to come up. Yeah, uh, Dr. So Pops that I think is you yeah. know is, yeah. is something which is my experience and yes. may not be anybody else's. Yeah. But. Yes. I join uh, Dr. Batra in answering uh, the questions that make in India who will buy. See, unless we citizens as responsible don't encourage the local products, local things, who else will do? And in fact, uh, to the very extent of the laboratory, for example, I run a laboratory. So, you know, I have all the equipments that is made in India. And as long as you get the requisite quality, I don't think it will be very difficult to have the equipments purchased and use the local facilities available. And I also know that many of uh, the manufactured goods, if not consumed in India, they're exporting outside. Also, they're very successful. That's, again, good for India as well. Yeah. Uh, I would also yes. like to uh, uh, comment on this question. Uh, so, so why oh, Vivek, people... Uh, what, before you could start, if I could ask you, you're one of the youngest uh, you know, entrepreneurs here. What are you observing from this, uh, uh, this discussion? Does it motivate you that, you know, let's build it up. Let's, let's go in that spirit, that aggression. Yeah, so, so definitely I'd, I'd come at that. Uh, but first, I would like to uh, uh, comment on the, the problem that why we are not using make in, made in India products. Uh, so what I feel, I don't know whether, whether uh, uh, someone would agree with me or not, but, but uh, we haven't made our image, uh, uh, made in India product image uh, such as of, of such a level that people start using it. You know, German car makers uh, are famous for their cars uh, because they built that, that uh, uh, technology with them. Still, you know, we, we uh, feel that, okay, let's use German or, or German, German brand because they have built that uh, technology because they, they are famous for that. We haven't done that. When, when, we, uh, when our PM says uh, make in India, I, I uh, do agree with him, but I also want to add that create in India. You know, we are not creating in India. We are just making in, in India. You know, uh, making low-cost uh, product uh, is fine. Why don't we couple it with, uh, with the creating have you ever, technologies? Sorry, have you ever raised your voice to them or you are scared that, you know, they might cripple some of your plans? Uh, no, no, it's not that I'm scared. I mean, this is, the, this is one of the best panel I can uh, yes, uh, raise talk about this thing. So that's what I'm saying. We are not creating. We, if we, we have ample uh, amount of talent in India and we have uh, one of the best uh, uh, universities uh, in India, but we are still not creating. You know, so so the other day I was uh, going through this uh, comic strip. So so uh, it uh, said, what if Superman was born in India? You know, the best we would uh, leverage him by by asking him to deliver pizza fast. Very so good. that's what we are doing currently. Uh, coming to the Make in India, I can tell you with one thing: uh, we have creative awards and rewards here. Yeah? Their trophies and everything are well made in India and they serve to the global. Is Mr. Prasant out there? Mr. Prasant from Creative is there? All right, I think they seem to have uh, lost there. So uh, coming back to uh, Dr. Partha, so uh, this gentleman has made an excellent point about this Make in India, and he's also uh, very skeptical that something is not moving, and uh, uh, they're not able to reach out to this, uh, you know, uh, to, the, to the authorities. So do you think this is a major concern also for all of us?